I don't have any contacts in, so I'm basically blind as a bat right now, so I have no idea if my skin is actually that blurry. I was blind. But yeah, thank you. Alright, hi fairies. So today's video is going to be another installment of internet archaeology, a particularly noisy one, because it seems some people outside are breaking quarantine to throw a little musical party or a little jamboree. It's 11 o'clock and they're having a party. Is that Mulan? I am gonna leave. So this video is probably gonna be titled something like how we can fix the beauty community because this video is going to be a little bit of research, a video essay about the anthropology of cultural development and ways we can apply that to the beauty community. All while I do my makeup because like I say, every single time I do one of these, I have to make it gay somehow. I am a homo. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching. Really quick, just wanna let you guys know that I have a limited edition collection on Crowdmade right now. It's inspired by my favorite tarot card, the High Priestess, which represents knowledge, femininity, intuition. There's phone cases, stickers, and makeup or tarot card bags. I designed everything myself and the collection will be available from now up until November 1st. So please check it out if you'd like to support the channel. So in order to actually understand what internet drama is, we need to first understand what the taboo is. Now I'm sure many of you have heard that word taboo before and have a general kind of understanding of what it means. However, let's look at the exact definition within anthropology and sociology to get a clear understanding of exactly what a taboo is. According to one of my favorite textbooks, I think I've referenced this book on this channel at least like five times. The Anthropology of Religion, Magic, and Witchcraft by Rebecca Stein. Page 97 contains a section about the taboo in which it is defined. In a society, some objects and people may be off limits and are said to be taboo. The term taboo also refers to inappropriate modes of interpersonal behaviors. It would bring dishonor, bad luck, or some other negative result for a person to have contact with something or someone that is taboo. Doesn't that description sound a little bit like it's describing the beauty community's attitude towards drama. She's got a point. Something that would bring dishonor, bad luck, or some other negative result for a person to have contact with that someone or something. This observation is kind of the main reason why it appears that some influencers will almost near religiously avoid anything drama related or anything problematic because it appears that within the beauty community, drama or anything drama related is taboo. But it is important to note that taboos aren't always logical. You know, they aren't always there to protect you from something that puts you in direct danger. For example, I've heard that cows make great pets. You can teach them tricks. They're really cute and adorable animals. They're gentle. Some people actually do keep cows as pets. However, you can drive to almost nearly any fast food restaurant and order a hamburger, something made out of cows. Arby's, we be, eat our meat. I'm bringing this up because in religions like Hinduism, there's a taboo behind eating cows. This contrasting behavior and treatment of this one animal is a clear example of a taboo and how they may not always be logically justifiable to an outsider's perspective. Finding the reasons behind taboos is an extremely complicated branch of hermeneutics, and some taboos are debatably even almost impossible to explain. The exact reason behind a taboo doesn't change the fact that it is still installed within society and culture. In as period Given the fact that taboos aren't always logically trying to protect us from something dangerous, let's actually look into what is taboo here, what drama and tea actually is. Spill the tea, girl! The sole purpose of a YouTube video is to provide some form of entertainment. And if a video does provide some entertainment, then it is safe to say that the video does have some appeal. That being said, drama-related content in videos seems to be extremely appealing. Very good tea. An example of this appeal and a case study I will use to further solidify and prove that point is the journey of a creator on this platform known as D'Angelo Wallace. Now, D'Angelo has commented on some of my videos before. I think he might be watching this video. If so, hey girl, don't worry, I'm not gonna be shady. <laughs> But I will be using some direct observations about his channel's performance to justify that point. That drama or drama-related content is extremely appealing. So D'Angelo has been on YouTube for years. He's done content ranging from artistic tutorials to socio-political commentary videos. He recently released a trio of videos, respectively for Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, and Tati Westbrook, gaining over 1 million subscribers in less than a month from these videos alone. But I'm bringing this up to offer you a question. Why is it that a talented creator that has 
been producing consistently relevant content for years on this platform. He is genuine, amazing, he is selfless. Why is it that they effectively triple their subscriber base the moment they do drama-related content? Coincidence? I think not. I think we should have that conversation. These are clear examples of the power of the taboo, but in this case, the power of drama, as that is what is taboo in this case. But were D'Angelo and my videos made out of hatred for someone or out of deception with malicious intent? It's disgusting, it's awful. Absolutely not. Like I said, things that are taboo don't always mean they're harmful. The book actually described this in the same section about taboo. This is not malicious power, it is neutral, like electricity. If you stick a wet finger into an electric socket, you will receive a large jolt of electricity, and perhaps you will die. <laughs> Sparks fly, it's like electricity. The electricity is not evil, but it is powerful. And when properly harnessed, it can be used to light our homes, run machinery, and so forth. So the power of the taboo, in this case the power of drama, its power is not malicious or malignant or evil in any way. It's neutral, but it is powerful. I am so powerful. Wait, I forgot I was doing my makeup. But I'm going to continue to argue that there isn't actually anything wrong with the appeal of drama. Entertainment is entertainment. I'm using the Odin's Eye blush. They sent me so much stuff that I'm to use in this video. So thank you so much to Odin's Eye and their shimmers look really good, but I digress, let's get back on topic. Because as I said before, the core, sole purpose of a YouTube video is to provide some form of entertainment. Because we mustn't forget, dear viewer, that what you're looking at right now is merely a collection of dancing pixels that dance across your screen just in the right way to keep you entertained and keep you from forgetting the fact that you're just staring at an inanimate piece of glass. I hate this channel. Dropping a little bit of influenza knowledge on you for a second, the YouTube algorithm does not prioritize revenue it prioritizes watch time, which means it's not about making money, it's about keeping your eyes glued to this screen as long as possible. This is crazy. And I'm not trying to shame you for watching digital content by saying that, because as long as you're having fun, then you're not really wasting your time. But as I said, entertainment is just that, entertainment. But it's like comparing Keeping Up With The Kardashians and National Geographic. Both provide entertainment to a wide range of audiences, but does the difference in tone and content actually make one right and one wrong? Absolutely not. And there's no shame in finding Keeping Up With The Kardashians far more entertaining than National Geographic, and vice versa. Sure, it might be annoying and cringy sometimes. Do you know how to do your own laundry? No. But there isn't really a huge moral dilemma involved when you partake in worthless entertainment. If we apply that same logic to the beauty community, we can see that it checks out. That logic being tutorial slash review or the more educational content, something akin to National Geographic, versus reality TV or celebrity related content, that being Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Real quick, the eyeshadow palette I'm going to be using is the 3CE palette in the Style Smoother. I've been experimenting with a lot of Korean beauty and if you're guessing it's because I have a YesStyle code, you are correct. <laughs> The code is on the screen now if you'd like to use it and save some chaos back on track. We can see that it's as if there's two sides to this matter. There is a very old collection of essays called mm. Methologiques. It's either less Methologiques or Methologiques. It's some fucking French shit, I don't know. Yes. But within these essays, the idea of cultural spectrums is introduced. The idea and concept that when two opposing paradigms exist, they exist at opposite ends of one relative spectrum. And our place on the spectrum is constantly shifting back and forth. A pendulum that's motion is the shifting of culture itself. So let's construct a hypothetical spectrum using the two paradigms mentioned previously. At one end we have the more educational and informative content, and at the other end we have the reality TV and celebrity relative content. And based on, you know, just the general way spectrums work, we can see as one side gains some appeal, the other loses some. This shifting can be seen in various remarks from influencers, such remarks implying that the shift is somehow morally wrong or distracting us from our true purpose. There's been a lot of attention in this past year, but I know going forward we're all wanting to take a step in the right direction, get back to what it's really about, just beauty, 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 what it's really about, just beauty. No. We can see here that one side of the hypothetical spectrum is antagonizing the other, which is not unexpected. When in reality, part of the theory in the previously mentioned essays Me is that both sides of the spectrum are neutral and equal. I'm just like you. I think that's true. You're just like me. Yes, I can see. Neither are superior or inferior to the other. Just as I stated earlier, entertainment is entertainment, regardless of if it's keeping up with the Kardashians or National Geographic. So the 3CE palette is all mattes, but I definitely want to do some shimmer on my eyelids. I'm gonna recreate a look I posted on my Instagram. And to do that, I'm gonna be using the Solomane palette by Odin's Eye. 
I'm glad you brung it up because I've been dying to talk about it. I'm gonna be taking this shade down here. Ooh, girl, look at her. But the next thing I wanna speak to you about is the ways in which the power of the taboo, or in this case, the power of drama, can be weaponized and used not as a tool to entertain and elevate, but as a tool to demerit and destroy. From the All the Two Mini Force palette, I'm gonna take this green shimmer right there in the center. And our primary example to show how the power of drama can be weaponized. Remember this palette? And remember how the introduction to what was basically going to be a nine-part commercial for that palette? Remember how within that trailer, drama or drama-related content was at its core? If what Tati said about Shane and Jeffrey orchestrating the drama last year to sell palettes is true, Jeffrey and Shane needed James marginalized and out of the way for their November launch of the Conspiracy Palette. That means something much darker and sinister is at play here. An attempt to not merely just influence the swinging of the pendulum, but an attempt to control it, to own it, to be the pendulum, to covertly establish a monopoly on appeal. Someone who doesn't just influence the taboo and social order, but someone who personally reshapes it. How you doing? Effectively creating a new set of rules and double standards. That key word there, a double standard, something that doesn't really make sense when you compare it to other previous instances and examples. And purely for educational purposes, not at all for tea or drama, I personally find this palette extremely mediocre, and I feel like for the price, because this is a $60 palette, you can get way better. I'm being dead <laughs> honest. But this isn't a review of the conspiracy palette. I'm bringing that up because I'm sure many, many people share that attitude. You kind of used it for a week and you didn't really use it that much. But nevertheless, this palette still sold out in minutes, being one of the first instances I can think of of Shopify completely crashing. So why is that? Why is this palette no one talks about anymore. Why was it even a flash in the pan in the first place? Really quick off camera, I'm gonna do my eyeliner using Lime Crime Serpentina Liquid Lipstick. But how did this palette garner up so much hype? It likely wasn't because it was revolutionary, but it was likely due to the previously mentioned reasons, a weaponization of the power of the taboo. If a creator can tap into this power and use it to inform and educate people, then what's from stopping a person with less righteous intentions from using that neutral but powerful force to sell millions of palettes? Absolutely nothing. Zero. The book briefly touches on this, the weaponization of taboo to rearrange social order during the section on mana, the Polynesian concept of taboo. This relates to the idea of things that possess supernatural powers seen as dangerous and often best avoided. Mana is an impersonal supernatural force. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard that word mana before, like within video games and such as just a general term for magical power. Mana is an impersonal supernatural force that is found concentrated in special places in the landscape, in particular objects, and in certain people. The chief has the most mana, followed by his relatives and so down through the hierarchy. However, because of the chief's great amount of mana, many taboos are in place. Not only is a taboo to touch the chief himself, but because the chief's mana also runs into everything he uses, it is also dangerous to use his furniture or even use his fire to cook with. This is a clear and blatant example of a way the taboo can be used to establish power and fear. Just like what Tati said Jeffrey had attempted to do multiple times, use its taboo nature against people to establish fear and power, was how he would frequently comment about how much dirt he held on other brand owners and members of our YouTube community. I believe that he actually held blackmail material on many people and was capable of destroying the entire community. I hope you can see now that drama and the whole problematic culture isn't actually the problem here, as it's a neutral force. The problem here is when individuals use this neutral force to power weapons, just like the very electricity that keeps your lights on could be used to kill you. Electric chair. <laughs> And it's not electricity's fault the way people misuse it, just as it's not drama or tea's fault for the way people misuse it. So now that we're all feeling a little bit creeped out, it's getting weird. How do we fix it? How do we improve? How do we move forward from all of this? To gain some insight about that, let's reference a different textbook, Anthropology and Development, Understanding Contemporary Social Change by Jean-Pierre Oliver de Sardin. <laughs> This textbook focuses on the anthropology behind cultural change and cultural development, but the beginning of section 5 describes an interesting observation. Those who intervene in development, that is to say development agents in general, are confronted with a shocking reality. The behaviors of the people with whom they enter into contact do not coincide with their expectations. The perception of the discrepancy between expected or desired attitudes and real attitudes of target populations is an experience, often traumatizing and usually painful 
painful to which I think all development practitioners have been subjected to various degrees. The problem resides less in the discrepancy itself, which is unavoidable as we shall see, than in the ways in which interveners react to it, how they adapt or fail to adapt, how they integrate or fail to integrate, how they explain or fail to explain. This is basically alluding to a feeling of disappointment. Yay, disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment in some almost unspoken moral ideology, which is elaborated on in a later section. As soon as the question of development is raised, the usual reaction is to put the emphasis on ideologies, that is, theories or policies or even philosophies. Basically what that is trying to say is anytime cultural change is brought up or considered, it is always done through an ideological, that's a hard word for me, wow, that's great. an ideological lens or ideological priority. And these ideologies are separated into two categories. According to page 70, two paradigms which appear to be intricately linked provide an overall justification of the professional practices of developers, regardless of their ideological, moral, or political orientations. Paradigm A. Development seeks the welfare of others, the altruistic paradigm, hence its strong moral connotation. This is basically attempting to change society for the better of humanity. I only poo-poo farted for the good of humanity. It's the selfless and more righteous approach. Paradigm B. Development implies technical and economic progress, the modernistic paradigm, hence its strong evolutionist and technicist connotations. This is the progressive ideology. So to review, the two ideologies people will oftentimes use to justify a social discourse, the altruistic or selfless paradigm, or a progressive modernist paradigm. I just popped on some falsies when y'all weren't looking. <laughs> But the idea of those two paradigms is, you know, actually quite romantic in a way. It's like social change occurs because people want the best for each other and, you know, yada yada yada. Wait until we read the next page. The point to note is what the altruistic paradigm and the modernistic paradigm have in common is that both constitute an unavoidable reservoir of justifications. This meta-ideology partially overshadows the fact that development is both a market and an arena. It is a market in which goods and services and careers are put into circulation. It is a question of selling projects, slogans, policies, hardware, software, and careers. But it is also an arena. Various social actors situated on the same stage vie with each other for stakes of power, influence, prestige, celebrity, and control. Altruistic and evolutionary visions of development occur the enormous risk of clouding this aspect of the matter. Now level with me here for a second. Wait a minute. Doesn't that sound like an extremely pessimistic description of the beauty community? She's got a point. Obviously the beauty community is a marketplace because it's about the sale of makeup. If you're guessing it's because I have a yes style code, you are correct. So the marketplace aspect is pretty obvious, but the arena aspect is quite interesting because the thing is we all acknowledge it to be so. It's just, we don't call it an arena. We call it the circus. Oh shit, here we go again. That thing in Shane Dawson's apology paragraph or whatever on Twitter, that whole conversation about the circus of the beauty community is actually just a modern interpretation or rendition of this exact concept. The fact that it is both a marketplace and an arena, but it's an arena because it's competitive. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. So great. That's great! Now we have a pessimistic view of the beauty community, but what does that mean? What does it mean? And more importantly, why is that important? Well, the last sentence of the statement I just read to you keys into why this is so important to acknowledge. Altruistic and evolutionary visions, the two ideologies that are all lovey-dovey, you know, political justice and progression. The altruistic and evolutionary visions of development occur the enormous risk of clouding the aspect of this matter. As this clouded perception, as these ideologies can lead to false expectations. And honestly, that's kind of the situation we find ourselves in. The feeling of disappointment I referenced during the beginning of the video, when a difference in the expected and desired behavior is not actually the real behavior. And that discrepancy is tragically disappointing. I'm gonna use the shade Gnome from the All the Two palette from Odin's Eye. Wow, that's great! But why this is an issue is these false expectations act as weak points. And when the cunning understand these secret weak points, instead of correcting these weak points through transparency, they choose to feed into these hopeless delusions, as if by us supporting them and giving them a platform, it will lead to a better future, a more prosperous future, or maybe even a revolution of some kind. When at the end of the day, we're left feeling disappointed, as what we're dealing with is a marketplace and an arena. The altruistic and evolutionary visions of development occur the enormous risk of clouding the aspect of this matter. That being said, however, the beauty community has still had a hugely positive impact on people's personal lives and the socioeconomic acceptance of LGBT people. Vegas, let me hear you! 
Exactly. But I'd like to argue that this isn't due to the marketplace or arena of the beauty world. All the beauty community did was bring together people who thought they were alone, and it helped them realize they weren't alone. This didn't happen solely because of the sale of makeup or a new makeup technique that everyone was doing. And regardless of the drama or what makeup trend happens next, the community will always be there. Whoa! This is a strong message! And the unspoken irony of this entire situation is that a lot of influencers that will complain about the shift in the spectrum, the ones that say it's distracting or going down the wrong path, the community, the very thing they claim will disappear if we keep going down this route, is the very thing that will outlive their entire careers. Regardless of what drama happens next and who gets cancelled next, do these people take such an issue with drama because it poses a threat to their source of income as opposed to the thing they claim they care so much about, which is the community? She's got a point. So a way that we can fix the beauty community is not by deleting all drama channels or by holding influencers to an unrealistic standard of perfection, but it's actually by finding a healthy balance and developing more realistic expectations. We need to first accept the taboo before we can hope to understand it and deal with it in a healthy way. Within my notes, I have the example of stem cell research. Stem cell research is something that is taboo to some. Pause that. <laughs> If we accept stem cell research, if we accept this thing that is taboo, we can set regulations and monitor it so it progresses in a healthy way. Everyone would benefit from that, even if it is slightly uncomfortable during the beginning phases. However, if stem cell research is completely banned, do you honestly think people are going to listen to that? No, ma'am. Or do you think stem cell research is likely to fall into the hands of people who aren't really willing to follow the law? Those are just a few examples of how accepting the taboo, accepting these controversial things, can actually lead to a better result. By accepting and acknowledging the validity of both ends of the spectrum we created in today's video, we can find balance and the unspoken rules don't have to be unspoken anymore. We can have an open and honest conversation about what we find appealing and entertaining and what we don't find appealing and entertaining. But in order for us to do that, we need to acknowledge that not all drama is morally wrong. We as a community need to take certain things less seriously while taking other things way more seriously. And I know I sound all, let's just forgive each other. I definitely acknowledge that some people make mistakes, but the thing is, is like I said, some stuff just crosses the line. Like, do we really have to personally ask you not to be a not- Very good tea. You know, see, but that's the conversation we need to have. That drama can be kind of fun and entertaining if done lightheartedly and if done in the right way. Expecting someone to avoid having an opinion while also expecting them to remain genuine and authentic, that's kind of an unhealthy expectation and very stressful and almost impossible for a lot of people. Having Having personal opinions and wanting to share them with your audience in a respectful way, not wanting to hurt anyone, having good intentions doing so, that doesn't make an influencer problematic. It makes them a genuine person that wants to be vulnerable with their audience, which is kind of what people want. These little adjustments will have huge impacts on the overall social climate of the community, debatably fixing it. And like the first page of the Anthropology of Development I read to you states, the problem resides less in the discrepancy itself, which is unavoidable, than in the way in which interveners react react to it, how they adapt or fail to adapt, how they integrate or fail to integrate, and how they explain or fail to explain. Okay, that was a long one, but yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope my makeup or hair doesn't look too busted. I don't have any contacts in, so I'm basically blind as a bat right now, so I have no idea if my skin is actually that blurry. I was blind. But yeah, thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to check out my merch. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm done.